Pam from CAE Healthcare about their new birthing mannequin. Tell us about the name and uh, about it. Absolutely. This is actually CAE Fidelis Maternal Fetal Fidelis. Simulator. Fidelis. Okay. Yes. So we went with CAE Fidelis because it's really the start of a brand new patient simulation line for CAE Healthcare. Okay. And our engineers have really taken the time to redesign every feature throughout the simulator. So this is the first mannequin from CAE Healthcare since the acquisition of Medi, if I'm not mistaken, in terms of the high fidelity um, aspect of a, of a mannequin. Is that correct? It is, yeah. So what we've been able to do is take the acquisition of Medi being one of the industry's pioneers in patient simulation and CAE Inc. being one of the industry's pioneers in aviation simulation. And really the design of this simulator had everything to do with the blending of those two companies. Looking at patient simulation and really focusing on three main aspects in the design. Capability, serviceability, and reliability. Right. And I think that, that that combination of experience in the aviation world in terms of the, the fact that simulation has been such a huge part of that, which I really learned about at Watts uh, 2013 last year, um, just seeing how uh, aviation simulation has been really adopted not only by, say, pilots, but also the flight attendants, by Absolutely. by the ground crew, uh, by everyone really involved with aviation. It, it, it was really uh, awe-inspiring to me that there was an industry that fully had adopted simulation as part of their programs, and so I know that the technology that there is is even more advanced in terms of its application because it's been adopted across the board. Yeah. It's high-stakes application, and so what that allowed us to do, and we're actually able to share engineers, too, through our parent company as well. Wow. So we've been able able to put in DFMEA and D uh, Devin Johns, who's one of our lead engineers, can speak to that a bit more. But the testing and validation of our parts that we go through is something that has never been seen on the legacy yeah, menu side. Really going through and designing and preventing failures in the design phase, rather than having our customers identify things later on. So everything from her airway has been redesigned with new material to be much more ruggedized, much more durable when you look at it. Redesigned line for full functional mechanical ventilation. The pulses have been Design. And so it's not just obstetric emergencies with this simulator. You see really nice, quiet chest rise and fall for her. So there's breakthroughs on all different areas with the right. CAE. It really, it sounds like we're, we're taking a look at maybe the next generation of, of high fidelity simulation in terms Absolutely. of the market and where it's come so far. So uh, tell me, why, um, why, why Fidelis? Why start? Uh, I don't think that Medi's ever had a high fidelity uh, um, uh, maternity simulator before, so uh, what what drove us into this direction for, for CA's first mannequin in terms of that com combined engineering effort? Yeah, so when we looked at the needs, the market needs, actually in 1997, INEM, which is our development partner from the University of Bordeaux, really started looking at patient safety and how they could validate and integrate maternal fetal modeling to really focus on the patient safety aspect. At the same time, Medi had been hearing from the market this constant need for a more reliable, more durable patient simulation focused around birthing. And so as we developed our partnership with the University of Bordeaux and the market continued continue to drive that need. So it's a consistent message from the market that we blended those two messages together and what we feel we produce the most advanced maternal uh, birthing simulator on the market because it looks at patient simulation, patient safety, validated modeling, and it's got the durability. Right. All of the, the kind of uh, evolutions of uh, this, the, uh, the society and the, the entire industry and the community are going into this mannequin. So it really is kind of uh, yeah. starting at a new plateau and taking it further. Um, probably, you know, standing a little bit on the giants of the gobbles of the world that have gotten us this far, uh, but definitely taking us to the new level, which is very, very exciting. So tell me a little bit about uh, its availability. Is it going to be available uh, the, the quarter one, or, or is it, when's the rollout plan, and where is it going to start first? Yeah. So one of the exciting things about working with the University of Bordeaux is actually allowing for clinical validation and testing. And it's something that's unique to this simulator that we're really excited about. So as we go through that process, we're expecting production in this summer. Okay, great. Yeah. So this is going to be something that's going to be available very shortly to the community. Uh, tell me a little bit about some of the features of maybe some of the, the, the skin and tell me about what's going on there. Absolutely. So if you're looking at the skin, there's a lot of things you should focus on as well. There was a lot of design intent put around maternal aesthetics and articulation. Okay. Um, so when you're looking at articulation, this is going to make for much more realistic wow. birthing positions. Okay. Really nice articulation associated yeah. with that. You'll have full palpable contraction. She'll have a boggy uterus. We actually have a Leopold's fetus, which will be able to palpate and do different Leopold's maneuvers. When you're looking at um, the only simulator that truly has observable pelvic tilt for McRoberts maneuver. Wow. Um, 
So when you're looking at the skin as well, the servicey, we have static uh, servicies which have the right effacement and dilation. So there was a lot of attention and detail focused on aesthetics and articulation for the maternal as well as for the fetus. Right away you notice the difference both in articulation. So oh look at that, wow. Absolutely. There's really nice stopping points around it. So it's firm yet soft just like a newborn as opposed to being plasticky. Yeah, so when they're looking for like breech delivery, you want them to be able to palpate. There's really nice ridges in the back, fontanelles. Mm. So it allows, essentially it's software, it's supposed to be soft, hardware, it's supposed to be soft. Definitely feels like that, right. But but not too flimsy. It's it's the right amount of texture, so it sounds like, a, feels like a lot of uh, thought process went into the, the, the design there. Absolutely. Very cool. So that's one thing I've always noticed about CAE um, products. Before the acquisition of Medi, and they had uh, released um, the Caesar. Caesar, thank you. Uh, the skin texture on Caesar was just amazing. The feel and the texture, and the um, also the durability, but it was just really unlike any other mannequin I'd ever seen before. So I think that I'm, I'm also feeling that here with Fidelis in terms of yeah, uh, that texture. It's feel our hands, if you will, too. And really, when you feel, if you want to talk about really nice texture, if you look at our airway, and the feel of the airway has been much improved over our previous simulators as well. Right, OK. And that's really something that, that we hear a lot about from, from the community in terms of, of that, that texture and that feel. Great. Any other uh, major? category that we should cover or should we move on to Dev and get kind of like techie on us? Yeah, well we can let our engineers certainly get techie. I think the big thing to look at is she's designed to meet all of the learning objectives around obstetric emergencies. So whether it's maternal cardiac arrest, arrested labor with instrumental delivery, breach delivery, postpartum hemorrhage, she's really designed to meet all of the 